Today we're going to learn how to create the paint drip effect in Photoshop. So let's get into it. What's cooking? My name is Brendan from BeWellCreative.com and on this channel we love to talk about photo editing and Photoshop. So if that sounds like something that you'd be into, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video. Now today we're going to learn how to create the paint drip effect, which is very simple to create, but it has a ton of aesthetic value, which is awesome, especially for portrait photography. So let's hop into Photoshop and see how it's done. Now here in Photoshop, I've imported my portrait that I grabbed from Unsplash and my paint drip image, which I found on VectEasy.com. They have a ton of free vectors that you can use and it had a perfect image like this. If you wanna download this exact image, you can follow the link in the description below. Now for this effect to work, we need to separate our subject from the background so that we can apply them onto our paint drip and do our color splashes behind them later on. Now I've talked extensively about how to remove backgrounds in Photoshop and other tutorials. So I'm gonna leave that down below if you want to learn how to do that but for this tutorial we're going to use a very simple example since we have a plain background with my portrait layer selected i'll go up to my properties panel and click on remove background it doesn't do the most perfect job as you can see here there are a few mistakes on her arm and also missed a big area over here but that's no big deal we can touch it up since there is a layer mask so with that layer mask selected grabbing our brush tool by pressing b on the keyboard i'm going to paint with white as my foreground color and just add back in this stuff, making all of this visible once again. And as for this area here, since it has a lot of complicated tiny hairs, I think it's gonna be easier just to get rid of it completely. So I'll use my pen tool and create a path around this and add that to my layer mask. So the pen tool selected by pressing P, I'll begin to create my path around this area. With your path created, just right click on there and go to make selection. Make sure your feather radius is 0.5 pixels and anti-alias is checked off. Click OK. Now with that active selection and your layer mask selected, you can press Command or Control and Delete to fill that selection with your background color, which in my case is black. Now the last thing that is a bit of an issue is the hair over here. There is a big patch here that doesn't look very good. So we'll once again with our brush tool painting black this time, I'll just mask out this big patch here, but we can leave the other stuff. It looks pretty much fine to me. So now we have our image cut out successfully and the hard part of this entire process is complete. Now the next part of this process is to add it onto the paint drip. But before we do that, I want to change the background color just so this is a little bit more aesthetically pleasing to look at. Now I did like the pink background of our original image. So I'll grab my brush tool by pressing B and I'll hold alter option to sample that pink color like so. I'll then go and click on my background layer and I'll hold alter option and delete to fill that layer with the foreground color, which in this case was the pink color we just sampled. Now with that all out of the way, let's start to add our paint drip in. Now the first problem that you'll notice here is obviously the white is attached to our image, but we can cut that out really quickly by going up to our quick selection tool and down here to our object selection tool. Making sure that our paint drip layer is selected, we'll just go and add a selection area around the paint drip. Photoshop will automatically select those areas that it thinks you want, and in this case, it does a very good job. Add that selection onto a layer mask, and now we're ready to go. For this effect to work, we want the paint drip to sort of blend in with the shape of your person. So I'll grab my move tool by pressing V, and I'll rescale this so it can better fit within the upper half of this portrait. I want the paint drip to come out of her shoulder and kind of blend into the area by her hair here. So if I hold the shift key, I can squish this paint drip to better fit within the width and length of the portrait. And something like this looks pretty good to me. As you can see, it's coming straight out of her shoulder. It blends really nicely and there's no harsh edges that are obviously left behind from the top of the paint drip. Now we have to add the portrait image into this paint drip and the easiest way to do that is by adding a clipping mask. So right clicking on that portrait layer and go to create clipping mask. It's now going to apply that portrait into the shape of our paint drip image. Now keep in mind that this will only work if your portrait layer is directly above your paint drip layer. If that's not the case, then this will not work. So again, make sure your portrait layer is above that paint drip layer. Now, since we want our subject to be extending past the paint drip, we need to duplicate this portrait layer. So clicking on portrait layer, pressing command or control J to duplicate that. We'll now click on the layer mask and use our brush tool to mask out everywhere below the paint drip. Pressing B to grab our brush tool, setting black as our foreground color. 
I'll just paint with a soft brush here and mask out everything below the paint drip to blend everything in. And now we have blended the two images together and we have the paint drip applied to our portrait. Now the problem here is that although it looks pretty good, if you look at the paint drips themselves, they're kind of flat in 2D. So let's add a drop shadow behind each of these drips so that it looks a little bit more 3D and pops out from the background. To do this, just click on our paint drip layer and we'll double click on that layer to open our layer style dialog box. I'll then go to my drop shadow option and I'm going to select pretty much the exact settings that I have here. I have an angle of 90 degrees, which is making my shadow appear on the downward side of the drip. I have a very small distance radius, so it's up to you how much you want this to be noticeable, but I kind of like four pixels for this effect. And the size of my shadow, I just leave it three pixels, so it's nice and subtle, but enough that you notice it and it pops from the background. Now the next thing I like to add is an inner glow. This just adds a bit of a highlight on the inside edge of our drips. In this case, I like to leave a white color selected and I'll just keep the opacity at like 50% area, just so that it's not crazy obvious, but as you can see, it just adds a nice little edge of rim light around those drips. So copying the same settings I have here, click OK. And now we have totally changed how that looks, turning those effects on and off. You can see the big difference that that makes. So now our paint drip effect is really coming along, but we have two options to go from here. We can either change the color of the drip itself, or we can just go ahead and add the splatter to the background. Now I kind of want to change this drip color to to a bright pink color. So to do that, I'll click on my paint drip layer and then add a hue saturation adjustment layer. Making sure that that hue saturation adjustment layer is directly above the paint drip, it's not going to affect the portrait. With that hue saturation layer selected, click on colorize and then we can start to change the color of that paint drip to whatever we want. So since I want that hot pink, I'll go somewhere in here, bring up that saturation, the lightness, and now that looks pretty good right in there. Now again, you can create any color you would like with this colorize feature. You can even make it more black if you wish, but it's just a worthwhile option that can totally customize things a little bit more. So with all of that done, it's time to add the splatter effects to the background of our drip effect. So clicking on that background layer, we'll create a new layer and call this to splatter effect. I'll then grab my brush tool by pressing B and click on my brush panel here. And I'm gonna be using these splatter brushes that are actually from Adobe for free. So if you have a paid Creative Cloud subscription, so I'm assuming if you're using Photoshop right now, you likely have this subscription, just click on the gear icon and go down to get more brushes. This will take you to the Adobe website and let you download a whole bunch of amazing brushes that they have there for free. So the one that we're using today is called the splatter brush. And once you've downloaded that brush pack, you can import it into Photoshop and start using it right away. If you're not sure how to import a brush pack, I've left a link down below for a step-by-step -step tutorial about how to do it. Once you've imported your brushes here, I'm going to select the second one, the Kyle Splatter Beautiful Mess, and I'm going to select a nice blue color here. Making sure my splatter layer is selected, I'll go and just paint behind my subject like so. I'll then go and darken that up just a little and add even more brush strokes. Now this looks pretty good to me, but I want to add a little pop of pink to match the paint drip. So I'll then select a nice bright pink color and I'll change my brush type to something a little bit more small like this one. And I'll just add a quick streak of pink around the image like so. And now with that, we've successfully created the paint drip effect. Now looking at the before and after, you can see the awesome difference that this made in our image and adds a cool creative effect that I personally love. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial and you're gonna try this paint drip effect for yourself, then make sure to hit that like button and also consider subscribing so you never miss another video. Now, if you wanna learn more Photoshop and photo editing tips, then make sure to check out my blog at bewillcreative.com where we got tons of good stuff there waiting for you. Now, that's all I have for you guys for today. Again, my name is Brendan from bewillcreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.